Hi there and welcome back to this introduction to yoga and this is number five and we're calling it counterbalance and I'll explain in a moment. Now if you're still lying down from the last video then tuck your hands behind your knees, have a little roll forwards and backwards and then come up to sitting. So we practice yoga asana and we move the spine in different ways. And we're going to work on forward bends and back bends now. And it's really important that you become your own little mini yoga teacher now. You'll work intuitively. You'll work listening to your body so something doesn't feel right. You ease back, you roll back as it were. And forward bends and back bends complement each other as you'll soon discover. So. Let's come into lying, but this time we're going to lie on our tummies and we're going to work on the lower back. So again, if you find that the lower back is a bit, you know, unhappy just now, or it's a little bit grumpy, then you know to go easy. So lying on your tummy, place your elbows out to the side and rest your stacked hands and your forehead resting on top of there. So that there's already a little mini end. We're going to lengthen one leg at a time and I would emphasize the word lengthen because we're breathing and taking our attention to our right leg, lengthening it away from the hip and gently gliding it just a few centimeters off the mat. Exhaling and repositioning it down. Moving your awareness to your left side now as you glide and lengthen the left leg away and then allow the leg to gently raise. Exhaling and lowering it back down. And repeat that to either side. Starting back again on the right side. And think length rather than height. Well done. So we're going to work intuitively now. After that little back bend, you possibly want to do a forward bend, rolling the spine in the opposite direction. So take the hands in line with the chest, move the hips up and over and fold back into extended child's pose, lowering the head and soften into that lower back. So well done. As you keep the forehead resting towards the ground, just acknowledge what's happened there. A counter pose. You did a little mini back bend and now you're folded into a forward bend and they complement each other beautifully. So we're going to either repeat that or we're going to introduce the arms. If you felt that was strong enough, you'd be wise to just simply repeat it. But if you felt it was ju just a bit too gentle, we can work with the arms and strengthen the lower back lumbar muscles nicely. So coming back down onto your tummy and you can either have your hands or this time you might want to work stronger, have your hands behind you with the forehead resting onto the mat. And lengthen away with the right leg, lengthen away with the left leg. And as you gently unpeel the front of the body off the mat, lengthen away with the arms. Ideally on an in-breath, exhaling and turn the cheek and rest all the way back down. Maybe you've had enough, but if you want to go to the other side, facing ahead of you, taking a deep breath in, gliding the hands back and allowing the legs to lengthen and gently lift only a few centimeters. Exhaling, turn the other cheek and gently lower down. Take your hands back in line with the chest and here you are doing another counter pose because the lower back wants to move in the opposite direction. Tuck the toes under, allow the knees to glide off the mat, hips going back and up towards the sky and here you are 
and your familiar downward dog, moving the spine in the opposite direction. It's all very instinctive and intuitive. The back bend and the forward bend complementing each other beautifully. So, back down for one last time onto our tummies. And this time we're going to do the cobra pose, but there is an easier version. And you have done it already in your sun salutation. It's the sphinx pose with the elbows dropping down. And there's a lovely little curve in the lumbar. But if you want to move into Bhujangasana, the cobra pose, we can think about straightening the elbows as we gently lift the elbows off the ground, smile with the collarbones and allow the shoulders to drop away from the ears. And here you are in the mighty cobra pose. And I want you to turn your attention just for a moment or two towards your breath. And imagine that you're breathing in from the feet, breathing in all the way from the feet to the crown of the head and breathing out from the crown of the head down towards the feet. Come out of the pose now if you need to, otherwise take one more visual breath as you breathe almost from the feet to the crown of the head and breathing out from the crown of the head back to the feet. And yes, you'll really want to do a lovely counter pose now. So gently lower the head, and back in line with the chest. Now you can either move up and over into extended child's pose, but if you wish, you can step forward, keeping the knees bent and come into a standing forward bend with soft knees and gently envelope and hug the elbows and use that lovely counterweight to help you iron out the lower back. Soft, soft knees, tailbone lifting, drawing the tummy in. Taking the arms, or dropping the arms I should say, softening into the knees and slowly coming up to standing. Do you remember the sun salutation that we did? We're just going to do a half version of that, inhaling the palms together, exhaling soft knees folding, stepping back once, twice into your plank pose, dropping down onto the knees and instead of moving forward, we're going to move back with the hips and move into extended child. Well done. You've become your own little mini yoga teacher there, working intuitively with these strong postures and the breath. And it's all about a balance, isn't it? It's like the sun, the moon. It's energising, calming, and the two complement each other beautifully. We're going to lie down now. I'm going to get you to do a really funny thing now. I have to credit my teacher, Tara Fraser, with this one. You're going to lie on your back with your knees up towards your chest. And I'm going to invite you to drift the arms and the legs up towards the sky. Keep the feet lowered if you prefer. Broaden across the shoulders and soften into the knees, engaging the tummy. And almost imagine that you're a giant piece of seaweed at the bottom of the ocean. And the limbs have taken on this rather kind of accepting, floating attitude to the atmosphere around you. Almost like a current of water is allowing the arms and the legs to softly move. Soften, soften, soften into the knees and the elbows and gently lower the feet down, stretching out with the legs. Now this one is another little bizarre one. I want you to start shaking the legs, maybe rocking the feet from side to side and shaking through the arms. So you're shaking, shaking, shaking. Maybe we're even rocking the head from side to side. 
And if any part of the body feels that there's a little bit of a sort of a block there, then see if you can work through that block so that you're also letting the hips and the shoulders join in. And then allow that movement to gradually pause, backs of the hands onto the ground. And as you lie here, enjoy the effervescent quality that you feel within you just now. This is the ancient yogic prana, which is otherwise loosely translated as energy, life force. You can feel it smoothly or maybe even almost fizzing within you now. And the ancients identified that the prana within us is the same force that's everywhere around us, in our atmosphere and in the universe. Consider the quality of your energy right now. I'm going to quote from a 600 year old text now, the Hatha Yoga Pradipika, which is to practice asanas, the postures that you've done today, to allow prana to flow freely through the body. Maybe, just maybe, you can feel that now. Well done everyone and thank you. Thank you.